T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, and lift off. Go Falcon, go Dragon. And lift off. NASA SpaceX's 33rd commercial resupply services okay, mission is on its down. way to the International Space Station. And what chamber pressure is nominal? Great call. Is everything nominal? And the vehicle has begun pitching and downrange to begin its journey to catch up to the orbiting lab. Now, in just a few seconds, we'll be throttling the engines down in preparation for max Q, which is the period of maximum aerodynamic pressure during ascent. This is a critical moment during flight because the combined stresses caused by Falcon 9 accelerating through the atmosphere and the ambient static pressure are... Falcon power and telemetry nominal. And good call out there for good telemetry. And that is when uh, the ambient static Falcon pressure... Falcon 9 is supersonic. <laughs> are, at their Q. ...are at their greatest. We also just heard that call out for Max-Q. Now, to help go from vertical to horizontal, the first stage performed a pitch kick just after liftoff, about 10 seconds into flight, that maneuver known as a gravity turn. The engines gimbal a small amount, and that slowly turns the first stage from going straight up to going horizontal with the help of gravity, and eventually we will be roughly horizontal to Earth as we achieve orbit. Now, the rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. And you can track our progress to orbit by watching the left-hand corner of your display, which is currently showing, the, which is currently showing the first stage velocity and altitude. Now, coming up shortly, we'll have a few events happening in quick succession, starting with MECO, then stage separation, and lastly, SES-1. And we should hear all of these called out by Mission Control. Main Engine Cutoff, or MECO, is the point during the flight where we shut down the nine C-level Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. Shortly after that, stage one and two will separate from each other, and the first stage booster will begin its trip back to Earth. And today, the booster will be targeting a landing on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, which is currently stationed in the Atlantic Ocean, about 400 miles downrange from the launch site. Finally, second engine start one, or as- Falcon 9 is on a nominal trajectory. And good call out there from GNC. Finally, second engine start one, or SES-1, is when the Merlin vacuum engine on board the second stage ignites. And we should hear this series of events starting in just a few moments. Stage separation confirmed. Now two and a half minutes in. And there you can see the great quick sequence of events, the main engine cutoff, the stage separation of the first stage booster, and that Merlin engine on your right-hand side igniting for the second stage to continue to push the cargo dragon as it continues on into orbit. Now two minutes a little bit less than three minutes into today's flight. Still about five more to go as it continues its chase upward to catch up to the International Space Station. On your left-hand side, you can see that first stage making its way back to Earth, and that's where they will begin the entry burn here shortly, which we will relight those three Merlin 1D engines on the first stage, and that will start with the center engine, followed shortly by two others, which is similar to pumping the brakes to slow down a vehicle as it passes back into Earth's atmosphere. And we need to do this to slow down to reduce re-entry forces, which then helps us recover and reuse that first stage. And again, this first stage booster looking to land for the seventh time. Now approaching four minutes into today's flight, just shy of halfway into powered flight. As you can see, the continued speed on the right-hand side to climb for that stage two and the Dragon spacecraft and the altitude also increasing by the moment. And we'll keep an eye out on that left side, that first stage booster, but there you see that Merlin vacuum engine performing now just past four minutes into today's burn. Now for the first stage during the entry burn, Falcon 9 will fire its Merlin engines, but the vehicle is still moving really fast. It causes it to fly through Mer Merlin's exhaust gases, also known as the rocket's plume. And that'll deposit a layer of soot on the vehicle, which is why our flight-proven vehicles for SpaceX look the way they do. 
and that soot comes off the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses with each flight as the soot builds up over time. But now we're continuing to monitor that second stage Merlin vacuum engine continuing to perform as we have about four more minutes left into today's flight as it's now climbing well over 10,000 kilometers an hour and reaching an altitude just shy of 170 kilometers. And as you can see on the timeline, we're coming up quickly about 50-ish seconds away from the entry burn of that first stage booster. You can see the telemetry of that first stage, the speed and altitude as it continues to make its way back towards the Florida coast. But for now, we'll keep our eyes on that second stage Merlin vacuum engine continuing to power the Dragon cargo spacecraft flying for its third time delivering a key cargo and supplies to the International Space Station. We're now coming up on about 30 seconds from the beginning of the entry burn as we continue to follow along with that telemetry on the left-hand side of your screen, but front and center is that second stage engine, that Merlin vacuum engine continuing to perform. Stage one FTS has saved. And there you hear the call outs in reference to that stage one booster still making its way back to Earth with the altitude about 80 kilometers. Stage two continuing to perform now over 15,000 kilometers an hour at an altitude of 195 kilometers above Earth. And here in just a few moments, we'll start hearing more call-outs for those entry burns coming up for the first stage. And there you can see it on the left-hand side. And there we've got entry burn shutdown on the Falcon 9 first stage. Both vehicles remain on nominal trajectories. Now, the Merlins on the Falcon first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust each during ascent and descent. At liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power. Now, the single MVAC engine on the Falcon 9 second stage has a much wider nozzle and is optimized to operate in space, producing 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Now, coming up next, we will start our landing burn on the Falcon 9 first stage in just about 40 seconds from now. Now, the landing burn is the final burn of the Falcon 9 booster, used to reduce the remaining speed of the vehicle for a gentle and precise landing on our drone ship. And we should be hearing that call out in just about 20 seconds from now. As a reminder, we'll be landing this booster on our drone ship, a short fall of Gravitas. Stage two is in terminal guidance. And good call out there. We'll be landing this drone ship on our, we'll be landing this booster on our drone ship, a short fall of Gravitas, currently stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. Stage two FTS has saved. And there's a good call out regarding our flight termination system. We should be hearing that call out for Falcon 9 first stage uh, landing burn startup in right now. So there you can see it on the left hand side of your screen. And there you saw and heard the Nominal call out. orbit insertion. And there you saw and heard the call out for the successful landing of our Falcon 9 booster. Again, this was the seventh launch and landing for this first stage. We also heard the 